Tennessee Tech head women's coach Kim Rosamond. Kim, um, it's the new season. Uh, this, what are your thoughts on, on what last year was sort of unprecedented, and, and we got through it though. But this year, a new opportunity uh, with a very experienced roster you have. So, what can you tell us about the Golden Eagles, and and then we'll go into some questions. Well, well, first, Kyle, you you mentioned our roster. Um, you know, I I I love our roster. Uh, I I love. Um, I love the the balance that we have within our roster. Uh, it's obviously exciting that we have uh, four super seniors that that decided to come back, uh, five fifth year seniors because Anna Jones is also uh, a, a fifth year senior as well. So, from a leadership standpoint, uh, you know I, I've been fortunate to be in several championship locker rooms, and that's where it starts. It starts with leadership and. Uh, this team's leadership is as good as as any that I've that I've been around. So I, I I'm excited for what is ahead. Um, we know they're not handing out any championship trophies, and and while we know that we have a lot back, uh, so does the rest of the league. And so um, you know it will be a great challenge. This league will be as good as it's been, um, but we're excited about it. We we embrace the expectations, and uh, you know we know it's a long process and a long road ahead, uh, but we're, re we're ready to put the work in and uh, excited about the opportunities that lie ahead. As we go on today, if anybody has questions for coach uh, or, or later, Anna, just let me know down in the chat. I will call on you uh, in the order I see them. So let's talk about that, uh, the, the super seniors and obviously COVID played a factor in the eligibility, but how rare, how rare going forward is it going to be to have a team with a transfer portal and things to have that many seniors on a team? And um, probably it's not going to happen a lot. It's not. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't think you'll see this. This Heck, you, you're not seeing it a whole lot this year, right? You know, I mean, it, because if you look at, at the transfer portal and what kind of transpired uh, all throughout the spring and the summer, um, you know, rosters are going to be changing um, really every day, uh, you know, every week, every month. Um, so I don't take for granted the fact that we have um, four young women uh, that chose uh, that chose this program again. Uh, you know, we we uh, we pride ourselves on recruiting, but uh, you know that was probably one of the biggest recruiting coup, coups that we've had uh, in a long time to get to get those four seniors to come back. But I think it speaks volumes about them. I think it speaks volumes uh, about the sisterhood that is on this team, uh, the loyalty that they have to this program, the loyalty that they have to each other and the love that they have for Tennessee Tech and this community. You know, Jordan Brock and Mackenzie Coleman were already accepted into occupational therapy school. Uh, they deferred that for a year. Uh, you know, Keisha Brady and Megan Clark uh, cho chose to come back as well. And, uh, and so, you know, I think it's just, I think it's huge. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy every moment every day with them. We also know that every day won't be a picnic. You can, you can just ask them, right? Um, but for, for this coach, it is a gift every single day to be able to walk down um, to that court uh, and, and, and just, just continue to have another season uh, with not just the seniors, but this entire roster, because this is, this is a special locker room. What is practice like then? So you have these people who they know what you expect. They know the plays, they, that kind of thing. Uh, you'll have to maybe you have other players you have to teach and stuff, but how, how's that different if you have a younger roster with these really experienced people? Well, I think first the, the standard every day doesn't change. And uh, you know, it, it, we are, we are no longer a coach, a, a coach fed team, we're becoming a player led team. And, and if you want to have an opportunity to win a championship, you know, it, it, coach led teams are only going to go so far. And so, you know, our players are leading practice every day, you know, when, when, when we're in a drill and it's, you know, it's not going the way that it needs to go. When you have players that are stopping the drill and saying, Hey, this isn't the standard instead of the coach stopping the drill and saying, this isn't my standard. It's now our player standard. It's not Kim Roseman's standard. It's, it's the player standard. And so uh, I, think, I, I think that is a point you wanna be at, uh, you know, a, a, as a program. And it's taken us, you know, it's taken us a little while to get there, uh, but we're there 
we're there now. And so, you know, so I think the standard is a standard every day and it doesn't change. And then I think the second thing is just from a competitive standpoint, wow, the difference that, that I've seen our practices, how different our practices look uh, in, year, in year six, as opposed to years one, two, and really three. Um, you know, I, we've got a very deep roster. Uh, you know, I like our new players. Uh, you know, I, I, I like our freshmen. Uh, our transfer, Anna Walker, uh, you know, ha has really uh, started to blossom in the last three weeks. And so while I like, I love our veterans that are coming back, uh, you know, Jada, Jada Gwynn, uh, you know, who if you look, if you, if you take the time to look at our stat sheet, you know how she impacts our team on so many levels. Uh, Malia Owens is a junior that I think has had a really, really good fall camp. Uh, you know, Peyton Carter has done a lot of really nice things. So I can just, I, can, I really, we've got 16 players and it's hard to talk about all of them. Uh, but I, I think this team has an opportunity to, to be much, much deeper than what we've been in years past. And I think that will also be a key to where we want to go. Players aside and, and getting an upperclassman, what, what, what did it take to get from the day you're hired through years one and two to where you are now? What, where are maybe the, some of the differences and in, 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 in be able to track the players that you want in your system and, and getting things to go the way you wanted to to get to this point? You know, Kyle, it, part of me goes, goodness, it, it, it's it's taken a long time. But then then also it's like, wow, I can't believe that that we're starting year six now. But I, I think for us, year one was simply all about culture. It was all about laying a foundation, really year one and year two. And we did not we didn't win a lot of games on the court uh, in those first two seasons. You know, our, our record was was less than stellar in those first two seasons. But what we were doing every day, we were winning off the court every single day. We were winning in practice. You know, we talked about the standard and, and establishing a standard every day in practice. We were winning in the classroom. You know, our, our, our GPA, uh, you know, has just done nothing but go up. Um, you know, in the last six years, we were winning in the community. We were winning in the locker room. And so while the wins didn't show in those first two years off the court, it set up what has happened the last three years. And, you know, year three, we had a breakthrough year, won 22 games. Uh, year four, uh, had a lot, a, a lot of players back and had high expectations and started the, uh, started the conference 8-0. Uh, but I think year four for us was a year of learning how to handle those expectations. Uh, we didn't, you know, we weren't expected to, to win in years one, two, and three. And then in year four, we were. And so we had to learn how to handle those expectations. And year five, we were a really good basketball team last year, a really good basketball team. We weren't a consistent basketball team. And, uh, you know, we, we won 15 games and we only played three non-conference games. So, you know, I, I consider last year's team, last year's team was a 20 win plus basketball team. Had we been able to play the schedule uh, and the number of games that, that we typically do. So last year was a very successful year for us. However, uh, you know, we, we didn't finish like we wanted to finish. We got to the OVC semifinals, which was our second year out of, out of three years to get to the semifinals. And now our goal is to is to play on championship Saturday and, and not only to play, but to have an opportunity to win it. And, but you can't win it until you get there. And so that's the next step. And that's, that's where we are. You know, uh, we, we, are, we are back to being a winning program. Uh, and now we've got to go from, from being winners to being the winners. And, and if it was easy, everybody would do it. And it's, it's not easy and nobody's going to, going to hand it to us. And, and we're going to, we're, there's going to be some great competition. And, you know, again, we're not picked to win the league. Belmont's got everybody back. They won it last year and they're picked to win the league. And so we're still somewhat of the, the underdogs, but we embrace that. But we also embrace where we are as a program and what that next step is. So historically, Tennessee Tech is the standard bear in the OVC. You said, you know, your team is back up to so pick second. So, you know, it's second of 10. You mentioned Belmont, some of the air teams. What, what is the level of OVC women's basketball right now coming off a uh, NCAA tournament win last year, obviously, for the league? Um, how have you seen that change in, in your six years uh, here? You know, I, um, I, I was fortunate enough. I, I was at Vanderbilt for nine seasons before I got here. So obviously extremely familiar 
uh, with the OVC. We played several OVC teams while I was there. And to see where this league has gone in the six years that I've been, been here has been tremendous. I mean, the level of women's basketball has been elevated. And I, I think it starts, you know, with the coaches. There's always been great coaches in this league. You know, you go back to Tennessee Tech, Bill Worrell, Mar Mary Nell Matters. You know, I can't say enough about them. Um, you know, but, but I also think what, um, what from top to bottom, uh, from, you know, from one to 10 in this league has done, um, you know, it is, it, it is really elevated the women's game. You look at recruiting and the players that are now coming into, into this league, you know, what Destiny Wells did last year uh, in, the, in the NCAA tournament, you know, uh, uh, and the name that she made for herself. And, and, and hey, we're, we're proud of Belmont. You know, I, I think it, it speaks tremendous tremendous amount about our league uh, for, for them to go and get a win in the NCAA tournament. It tells you how good this league is. Now we want to be, we, we want to be there this year and that's, that's the goal. Uh, but we're proud to be in this league and we're proud uh, of the level of competition that women's basketball represents on a nice nightly basis in the OVC. So you referenced you on your limited number of non-conference games last year. Um, Coach Pelfrey was talking about it earlier about things will be different this year. While there's still things going on with the pandemic, obviously you had uh, time to, to practice before the season. You'll have fans in the stands. You'll have a normal non-conference. How much of a difference did those things make? Or, and did maybe you, people don't realize that until you kind of miss the fans or you miss the, the traditional non-conference season? Um, how can you sum all that up and how this year will be different? You know, I, I think there were there were a, in everything there's opportunity, right? While there were there were last year was a, a difficult year in so many ways, not just you know in the sports world, but in so many ways. But there's also opportunity when there's challenges, and and I think what what it did for all of us as coaches and players, uh, when you're sitting in a meeting and and you're you're doing a scouting report and literally your AD walks in and you're supposed to play in 24 hours and you find out you're not playing that game. You know, we were, we were postponed almost two weeks to start the season last year. Um, and it felt like we were never going to get to play, but goodness, what a gift in some ways that was because it just, it, it the gratitude, when we finally got to go to UTC, we were, uh, Anna and I were, Anna Jones and I were actually just sitting there talking about it. Um, you know, we had five players in practice two days before we left to go to, to UTC to open up last year. And it, the game reflected that. There's, a, there's no how we played reflected that. But um, yeah, we, I think when, when something is just there for the taking every single day, some, sometimes you need to be reminded, um, you know, just uh, of, of what the opportunity is. And, and so I, I think we, we really do look at every day. And we said this so many times last year, and, and it's something I never want to lose again. As a coach, as a player, um, you, you look at every day as a gift. You look at every practice as a gift. You look at uh, being able to have team dinners as a gift. You know, one of my favorite things about being here at Tennessee Tech is after the games, watching our players go into the stands. We go into the stands at home games after every game. And, and talk with, with our fans and thank them for coming. That's something we, we haven't been able to do in well over a year. So those are all things, you know, that, that you don't even really think about um, that you really take for granted that, that I hope we never take for granted again. So let's end your session on this, your non-conference schedule. You're going to play Vanderbilt. You're going to play uh, Middle Tennessee. Uh, you get to go to, the, to Puerto Rico uh, for the San Juan shootout, which wouldn't have obviously been possible last year. And then Tennessee. So, I mean, there's some, there's some really good games and opportunities for, uh, for your team. Yeah. Um, Gulf coast, you know, who, who is, who wins their, their league about every single year, Sanford MTSU who went to the NCAA tournament. So uh, there is, there is no question uh, in, in our five seasons here, this will be the most challenging uh, non-conference season, non-conference schedule that we've had, but this is also the best team that we've had. And if I didn't believe in this team uh, and I didn't think this team was capable of handling this schedule, then, then we wouldn't have made it. Uh, and, and so I think it was important uh, to get to where we want to be in March. I think this was another step in our process 
uh, was, you know, our, our, our non-conference has been challenging. We, we always play some, some tough teams, but from top to bottom, <laughs> I mean, when you look at our non-conference schedule, um, it is, is it, it is, it is very, very difficult. Um, but, but it's also, I'm excited about it. And I think, um, I think it is going to help us be where we need to be when we start conference season. And that's the entire goal. Uh, of a non-conference schedule is to prepare you for conference, to prepare you for where you want to be in March. So, so while it's challenging, we are we've got the team, and the the experience and the roster uh, to navigate the schedule. Well, Coach, we appreciate your time this morning and this session and the other session you did, and and best of luck to your team this year. Thanks so much, Kyle. And we'll everybody. We're going to transition then to uh, Anna Jones uh, next. Um, can you hear me okay, Anna? Yes, I can. Per perfect. Let's get everything situated here. Um, before we get into some more specific questions, what are your thoughts? What do you think about uh, this Tennessee Tech team and this season uh, upcoming? You know, we have a lot of veterans, but we also have a lot of new young talent. So it's a good mix of players, a good mix of um, players with different styles of play. And, you know, we're excited to we're excited to play against someone other than ourselves at this point. You know, we <laughs> feels like we've been practicing forever now. And, you know, we're excited to really get into the games. I'm sure you probably heard what Coach said, but she said you all were talking about last year, not knowing when you're going to play that first game and, and not having a lot of people in the practice. So. How has how has this off season and, and so far into this year been different than than what you all experienced last year? Um, yeah, last year there was a lot of unknown going into the season. You know, you didn't know even on game day you didn't even know if you were if you were going to be able to play the game. So I think this year um, we since you know since June we've been going at it and we're ready for a little bit of normalcy. We're ready to have fans back in the um, back in the stands and. Uh, be able to play play some normal games. So being a, a fifth year person and a player and have these other players in your team that have been there for five or six years now, what's that like have, having that experience and, and, and being able to take what you all developed last year into a new season? Um, I think what's really special about this group is the leadership we have. You know, we have players that have played for Coach Rose for five years now and you know, you don't, you don't see that all the time. So I think that has been really um, helpful for us in this preseason, just being able to, you know, learn as quick as we're learning and pick up on things the way we are. Um, you know, the experience and leadership that we have is really special. And so I think that's going to really help us this year. You know, so you joined, you joined the team prior to the 2019-20 season. You set out, you played last year. What made the decision to, uh, to transfer to Tennessee Tech? Um, I think just, you know, everything about Tennessee Tech is like it checked off every box for me. Um, but really the biggest thing was the team and the girls on the team. It's just um, a really special group. And I think from, you know, my first time coming to visit, I realized how special this group is. And it was just something I really wanted to be a part of. I hope this question doesn't put you in an awkward situation, but you're going to play your former team this year. So when you see that Middle Tennessee on the schedule, I mean, what do you, do you have thoughts on, on that? Um, I think, you know, that's definitely going to be a really tough game as to like the rest of the games we have on our schedule. And, you know, everything, every game is going to be a challenge. And, you know, we have to go, I have to go into every game, you know, not with any type of like, um, you know, <laughs> But uh, I think it's exciting, and we're looking forward to it. Good answer. I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I thought we had to ask, <laughs> we had to ask you that question. So, you know, last year, looking at your app, 11.2 points, 6.2 rebounds, 2.4 assists, 1.2 steals. So you're doing a little bit of everything. What areas would you like to make improvement on going into this season? Um, I think this year we're really – we've all really been focusing on defense. And, you know, that's something that I definitely need to get better in this year, um, being more of a presence on the defensive end, being more of a leader on the defensive end. Um, you know, we've been focusing on that since June, especially using my voice and um, helping out the younger girls just with my experience. 
That's a good, that's a good point. So what's it like to, to be that upperclassman and to, to bring in these freshmen and, and kind of help you remember what that what it was like when you were a freshman uh, a few years ago? Oh yeah, I, de I definitely remember what it's like. And now I was just talking to Harley the other day about this is it's a long season and there's a lot of ups and downs. And, you know, when you're a freshman, sometimes it feels like there's a lot more downs than ups. And I think um, one of those things is, you need upperclassmen that have been there and done that and um, they can get you through those hard times. You know, we can be we can be there when they really need them and be an example of like, you know, how to get through it, how to be better, how to grow. What are either maybe both your some goals for yourself, but your team's goal is probably to win the OBC championship, obviously. But what are some goals that you're looking forward to going into this year? Um, definitely that is that's the biggest goal for us um, is to be is to be winners but I think everything we do we want to be the winner every single game you know we want to compete and you know we want a chance to play in the NCAA tournament this year um, especially this being so many of our you know last go at it that would be really special to end on on that note. Well, Anna, we appreciate your time this morning and uh, best of luck to you and your uh, teammates uh, this year.